Hi everyone. How are you doing today? I hope you're all doing well as usual. I am sorry for not posting any video for 7 days. It's because I have violated YouTube's community guidelines and got a strike, so I won't be able to publish anything for a week. Ha ha ha. Anyway, let's talk about the popular film series, Squid Game. Due to the large amount of material that needs to be explained, I split this into two parts. This is the first part. The Netflix series Squid Game is about poor people taking part in horrific games while elite VIPs watch the show for entertainment. Through messages and symbolism, Squid Game reveals what is truly about. The incurable sickness of the elite. Okay, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Warning. Humongous spoilers ahead. If you enjoy watching people getting killed execution style, boy, do I have the Netflix series for you. It's called Squid Game, and it also features a bunch of people falling from high platforms and splattering onto the ground. Indeed, you will witness so many brutal deaths in Squid Game that you won't have a choice but to become desensitized to them. Even the characters in the series end up having whole conversations about their childhood or something, while others are getting shot in the face about 10 feet away from them. They don't care anymore. And you won't either. And that's kind of the point. Despite the fact that Squid Game features extreme levels of gore and violence, the marketing surrounding it seems insidiously conceived to be appealing to children. This is one of the images one can come across while browsing Netflix, Children could easily mistake this thing for a children's movie, and there is nothing preventing them from watching it. The main villain looks like he's straight out of an episode of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. His workers look like buttons on a PlayStation controller. In short, everything is there to lure children to the series, to then traumatize them with scenes of rare violence and psychopathic mind games. This is a Squid Game-themed playground in a shopping mall in South Korea. In the series, the playground is where dozens of poor people get killed by soldiers, all for the elite's entertainment. Today's pop culture is sick. At the core of Squid Game is, the age-old and undying legends of rich elite people recruiting peasants to take part in deadly games for their entertainment. The 1924 short story, The Most Dangerous Game, is about a Russian aristocrat who captures people, releases them in the wilderness, and hunts them for sport. The 1994 movie, Surviving the Game, is about a homeless guy who gets offered a job, only to end up in a remote location to become prey in a hunting game played by rich and powerful people. More recently, The Hunger Games trilogy is all about poor people killing each other under the watchful eyes of the elite. Many legends are based on true stories. And there's something about these elite game stories that ring true. Squid Game took this age-old concept, added today's society flirtation with high-tech dystopia, and mixed in a whole lot of occult elite insanity. The result appears to have struck a nerve, because Squid Game is on its way to becoming the biggest Netflix series in history. But, like most Netflix series, the messages in Squid Game are twisted. It is about the culture of death that obsesses the elite, and making the viewers a part of it. And, through subtle symbolism, the philosophy of the elite is there for you to witness. Here's a look at the messages and the symbolism in this series. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The series is about heavily indebted people who get recruited to play a game, where the winner gets a massive cash prize. The losers die. We eventually learn that this entire ordeal was orchestrated by a group of rich elite people who enjoy watching miserable peasants being humiliated, infantilized and forced to become immoral animals in order to survive. The core theme of this series is aptly summed up during the very first seconds of the first episode. The introduction of the series shows an overhead view of children playing Squid Game. 
The outline of this game is also the main logo of this series. The reason is, it perfectly illustrates the core philosophy of Squid Game and, by extension, the Elite. The rectangle represents the masses. The circle at the bottom of it represents those who are poor and heavily in debt. The triangle above the rectangle represents the elite ruling over the masses. The upper circle represents the all-powerful occult elite that controls the world. Appropriately enough, the narrator explains that the children who play Squid Game must make their way to the upper circle to win. When that happens, the narrator says. And, in that moment, I felt as if I owned the entire world. Owned the entire world. Like the elite represented by that upper circle. At the beginning of the series, the main protagonist, named Guy Hun, is clearly in the lower circle of society. He steals money from his mother and runs away from the shady people to whom he owes money. Then, Guy Hun gets his first taste of elite sickness. While waiting for the subway, Guy Hun is approached by a mysterious salesman who happens to know everything about him. He proposes Guy Hun to play a game where he can win money. When the salesman wins, he doesn't want Guy Hun's money. He wants to slap him in the face. The elite doesn't get pleasure out of more money, it gets pleasure out of sadistic thrills, such as slapping this poor guy in the face over and over again. When Guy Hun finally wins a round, he can't wait to slap the guy right back in the face. However, stops him and shows him the money. For a moment, Guy Hun did not care about the money, he got caught up in the sadistic thrills of the elite. This scene foreshadows what will happen to Guy Hun in the end. After this humiliating game, the salesman proposes Guy Hun to participate in another game that promises much more money. After accepting the offer, Guy Hun is picked up by a car and is gassed asleep. He wakes up in a dystopian nightmare. The games take place in a massive compound hidden on a remote island. In many ways, this place resembles an MK Ultra Black site where sick experiments take place. And the dystopian system that takes place inside these walls is a microcosm to our modern society. Players are reduced to a number and are constantly monitored. The workers who enforce the rules are also tightly monitored. The players of the game are stripped of all possessions, dignity, and are infantilized to a ridiculous degree. These players represent how the elite perceives the masses. Before each game, the players are taken through a maze of stairs inspired by M.C. Escher paintings. This place conveys a sense of confusion and disorientation which furthers the player's infantile state. Games take place in colorful playgrounds which we naturally associate with the fun and innocence of childhood. However, every playground becomes the site of brutal mass murders carried by faceless workers. They hate the wholesomeness of childhood. They want sad broken individuals. At one point, the players actually band together and demand a vote to end this madness. The rule allows players to vote to stop the game. The players end up voting for stopping the game, and everybody goes back home. However, nearly everyone realizes that they have lots of problems that can only be fixed with money. Conveniently enough, the organizers of the game keep track of these players and invite them back. The result is, most of them go back to the game by their own free will. This concept is important to the occult elite, as they believe it liberates them from karmic laws. In short, the democratic process was an illusion. The elite rigged the system to obtain the result it wants to see. When they're back in the game, the solidarity between the players quickly dissipates. In order to see the players turn on each other, the organizers purposely give them a single egg as a meal. Surely enough, the players start fighting for the precious eggs. This reflects a classic tactic of the ruling class, by making resources scarce, the masses stop focusing on the rules and start fighting each other for scraps. The next games are specifically designed to pit the players against each other. For instance, the marbles game requires players to form teams of two. Naturally, most players team up with the person they are closest to. One guy even matches up with his wife. Then they learn that the two players must play against each other and the loser dies. 
This snapshot shows Guy Hun tricks this old confused man, who was his friend, to win the game. He had to stoop low to survive. More on the old man later. Players also realize that they can kill each other with total impunity outside of games. This leads to chaos and murders when the players are in the main area. This snapshot shows dead bodies are placed in creepy black boxes with bows on them. A gift of human sacrifice to the elite. The bodies are incinerated in industrial size installations. In the first episode, Guy Hun gives his daughter a gift that looks like the creepy coffins at the beginning of the series. One of the many instances of foreshadowing in this series. When she opens up the box, we realize that the gift is a lighter shaped like a gun. This scene foreshadows the numerous deaths by gunshot that are about to happen. Also, the gun is a lighter, which can refer to the bodies being incinerated. The fact that Guy Hun gives this gift to his daughter is in line with the overall agenda of exposing the youth to the elite's sickness.